Hi, I'm back. Thank you guys so much. I know I've been away a really long time, but I promise you I will be back on a regular basis. Woo, yay! So, welcome to Diamond Delight Edibles. My name is Liz, if this is the first time you stop by. And for all the rest of you wonderful, wonderful fans, thank you so much. You guys have been wonderful checking in on me and seeing how I'm doing. But I said I've been away a while, but now I'm back. So today, what am I going to show you how to make? I'm going to show you how to make spiced bleh, spiced sugar cookies and how to decorate uh, how to decorate them and to do simple decorations that make them look really, really nice. Check that out. We got this little suckers. And these are super simple to do. So if you say you can't decorate, well, I promise you, you can. And then I've done a two-parter here. So this is doing making a cookie uh, decoration on there with a projector. So I did a part two for those who are interested uh, in using a mini projector that you can um, project any image that you would like onto your cookies and uh, use either edible markers or edible paint to fill those in. And I will show you that, as I said, in part two. So let's get started with our cookies. We're going to get them made and baked and uh, show you how to decorate those simple ones first. All right, so the ingredients that we are going to need is three quarters of a cup of yellow butter, a quarter cup of green butter, and if you want to go half and half on your butters, that's fine. Um, but for taste purposes, I like to split it up between my sugar and that. So uh, half a cup of green sugar, half a cup of granulated white sugar, one egg, a tablespoon of milk, a teaspoon of vanilla. That's our wet ingredients. Our dry ingredients are two and three quarter cups of flour and a quarter cup extra in case we need it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And for our spices, you're going to use one tablespoon of ginger, teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of allspice, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of baking powder. Not baking soda, baking powder, one teaspoon. So that's all the ingredients for our cookies. For the icing, we're going to use a teaspoon of white vinegar, or you can use lemon. I, I like using the vinegar because it leaves no flavor. Um, the lemon obviously leaves that lemon, and I don't particularly like that. We're gonna need two egg whites, and four cups of powdered sugar. Now, another extract that I usually like to use is orange when I make the spice cookies. It goes really, really nice. So if you have orange extract, um, try that, pop it into your icing. You may really like it. All right, so now that we've gone over the ingredients, let's jump in and make those cookies. All right, so the equipment and the tools that we're going to need for our decorated cookies are um, a couple of baking sheets, and either parch lined or using the cookies, using the cookie sheets. Now I prefer the cookie sheets. They do give a much more even um, cooking on the bottom of your cookies, but totally up to you. Parchment paper works just fine. A uh, rolling pin, obviously. And if I'm going to show you how to make edible paint. So for that, you are going to need the grain alcohol. So it needs to be that 95, 93 to 9, um, 96%. You cannot use a lower grade alcohol because there'll be too much water in it and it will water through your cookies, messing them up and you don't want to do that. A stand mixer or a hand mixer and you're gonna wanna use the paddle and we're also gonna use the whip for our icing. And a um, pastry mat, if you've got one of these for rolling it out with the cookie dough, they're wonderful. If not, you can just use your counter. And that's pretty much everything. As you know, oh, a couple extra bowls for mixing mixing our colors. And as you know me, I always forget something, but I will let you know along the way. So let's first get the cookies made. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to cream our butter and our sugar together. Usually always the first step in baking. So I put in my yellow butter my green butter, 
my green sugar, my white sugar, and we're going to put on the paddle and get that whipped together until it's a nice light color. You wanna mix that together on medium. And um, you wanna make sure part way through to scrape down the edges of your bowl. And then I'm gonna turn this on now to medium high. Get her whipped up real good. So I'm just showing you the color here, whipping it up. And I said you want to go until it's nice and light, which is about where we are. So I'm going to start adding our other ingredients. All right, again, scrape down your sides. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add our egg. Make sure no shells get in. And you want to mix that until the egg and your uh, butter and sugar are combined. And the last we're going to add in here is our tablespoon of milk. Again, combine that until uh, the milk is well mixed into your, into your batter mixture here. All right, now that our wet ingredients, oh, you know what I almost forgot, the vanilla. That would have been so bad. It's kind of like forgetting salt in cooking. So I'm going to add in the teaspoon of vanilla and we're going to get that mixed in. Then comes our dry ingredients. Now I'm using pure vanilla extract, so I'm sticking to a teaspoon. If you have artificial, you can use two teaspoons and it'll give you more of the flavor of natural um, vanilla. So now we're going to add in our dry ingredient. All right, so in my bowl here, as I said, I have two and three quarter cups of uh, flour and I'm going to add in all our spices and salt into our dry ingredients. And I'm gonna mix that together with a whisk so that your spices and everything get well distributed through the flour. And this way you avoid getting like a bite of a chunk of something. It's always a good idea to mix, if you're using spices and that, to mix that into your flour. Now we're going to add a bit of our, about half of our flour. And start off on low, otherwise it's gonna go woof everywhere. And you want to scrape down the edges once that gets start gets mixed in. Now I'm going to add in the rest of our flour. And again, start on low. Feels pretty good. Doesn't feel sticky. So on to the next step. All right, so you can take your dough out of the bowl and just give it a little neat here. Form it into a circle-ish. Use a dough cutter, cut it in half, approximately. Put one off to the side and we're going to roll this out. So you want to put a little bit of sprinkle, a little bit of flour on your work surface, move it around so that way you don't get any big uh, flour spots. And we are going to roll this out, not to the full um, quarter because it's going to be too thin, it's too soft. So we're just going to roll it out about a half an inch. If the edges start coming apart like that, just squish them back together. So right now it doesn't have to be um, exactly um, rolled out to your exact measurement yet because we're going to let this cool and then we're going to roll it out to our quarter inch thick. So this is all I wanted these things make it really handy when you got to wrap up really soft cookie dough. Lay your saran wrap over the top. And then what we're going to do is we take our little tray, our little mat here. 
and just flip her over. Peel her back. And now she's on the saran wrap. Oh, nice. You want to make sure to make sure it's all covered up. Covered well. I usually do at least two wrappings of um, saran wrap. Ooh. My words escape me. And I'm just going to put this onto a cookie tray that I'm going to slip into the fridge. And we're going, um, you want to put it in the fridge for about two hours. I'm just going to do the other disc here. That looks good. And do my little saran wrap trick again. Wrap her up real good because we do not want it to dry out. And pop that onto the tray. I'm going to put those into the fridge and set for two hours. And then when we'll be back, roll them out, cut them out, bake them, and then decorate. All right, so now it's time to roll and cut out our cookie dough. Uh, let me find those cutters. So I'm using, um, when I do the drawing ones um, to project the images, I like to use a bigger um, cookie cutter mm -hmm, um, to give you a bigger surface to work on. So this is about a two and three quarter square. And then this is about a two inch um, round that I do can show you for the very simple decorating. So first thing we're gonna do, unwrap our dough. Oh, and the first thing you wanna do uh, is to preset our oven to 350 and make sure your rack is set in the middle. So you may want to take a little bit of flour and sprinkle it on your surface. You can move it around, place your dough and sprinkle a little bit onto your dough. And now we want to roll this out to a quarter inch. Now I use these what I call idiot proof rolling pins. They have these discs on them, the different measurements, and that way you get the exact measurement across your dough um, to be exactly what you want. So I have it set to the quarter inch, and I'm going to start just working out my dough and getting her rolled out to a quarter inch. Now one thing you want to make sure when you're rolling out your dough is that you don't press too hard, because that will cause your dough to tear. So you want to use the weight of the rolling pin and just the heat and just gently roll and it will it will all roll nicely. But if you press down too hard, you'll find it, your dough will split on the edges. All right, so you'll know your dough is um, rolled out correctly and at the quarter inch all over. And when you roll over and the pin just goes uh, directly over and you're not seeing any more dough being pushed out or any kind of bulges. So we're good to go there. So I'm gonna use my square one first. Not that you really care. And then you wanna get something to be able to um, uh, pick them up with. So I just use an offset spatula. Remove, remove, remove the excess dough. Then you can just put your put, Pick your cookie up oh. and put them about an inch apart on your cookie sheet. Ooh, these smell so good. And then just scoop up your dough. Reform it into a ball here and roll it out again. Might need a little flour. So now I'm just going to use the round one. There we go, and now I'm going to pop these into the oven for a seven to 10 minutes. Because I have the bigger square cookies, I set it for nine minutes to start with, and we'll try to check on them. So you can just scoop up your excess dough and continue to roll out and cut more cookies um, and, or cut out your second sheet. I'm actually gonna save it because I don't need that many cookies right now. So, 
I'm just going to wrap that up well and I'm going to put it in the freezer and that way it can stay in there for up to a couple of months. Or if you're planning on using it in the next few days, just put it in the refrigerator. All right, so while our cookies are baking there, I'm going to make up the royal icing or start it. Um, so I added two egg whites to the bowl and a teaspoon of vinegar. Like I said, I like to use vinegar so I don't have any flavor from it, from like using lemon. And uh, you do not have any vinegar taste at all, promise. And I like to use the clear, um, the clear vanilla extract when I'm making this so that it stays nice and white. Add a teaspoon of that. Add our whisk attachment. And we're just going to beat our egg whites until they be, just become foamy. So you want your egg whites to look like, can you see that? Foamy? Yeah, like that. Oh, cookies need to be checked on. So they just still need probably about two minutes. So if you just tap them and they don't bounce right back, the centers aren't done. And we want the edges to be slightly, lightly browned. So they probably need about two more minutes. All right, so next step that we are going to take is we're just gonna add all our powdered sugar to our egg mixture. I like to add half of it first. I always start it on slow, as I said, otherwise, woof! And you also want to then scrape down the sides. The powdered sugar always sticks to the sides. And once that's all mixed in nicely, I add in the rest of it. Again, I'm going to start it slowly, and then I'm going to increase the speed to medium, uh, medium high, and we're going to leave that for eight minutes. Also, don't forget to scrape down the sides of the powdered sugar. Now, if you're finding that it's too thick, just all bubbling up there, we're going to add a little bit of water at a time. So about a, tea, a tablespoon, at one at a time. So I... Uh, so my icing's pretty thick. I'm going to show it to you here. Oh. See it on the, on the whip? So I'm going to add in a, a little bit more water. I do like to make my royal icing to the piping texture. And then when I need to flood or make it um, anything looser, then I'll add the water to it. But I always prefer having it uh, made to piping texture first. That's just my preference. So I'm going to add in one more tablespoon of water there and I'm going to turn that up. So I'm just going to scrape down my sides one more time. And so this is the texture that I like my um, royal icing to be at. Because it's easy to add water and thin it out, but it's a pain trying to thicken it back up again. So I said, I'm going to leave this at medium high for eight minutes. Oh, forgot to scrape down the sides. Yeah, that's really super thick. I'm going to add uh, just a little bit more water. And we should be good. Let her go. Okay, so our cookies are baked here. See, they'll bounce back when you touch the centers. And it is light golden brown on our edges. So we want to let them sit on the um, tray for about 10 minutes. And then we'll, we will move them to a cooling rack to finish cooling. All right. So our icing is ready. Oh, very pretty. You want to smack off the, your, your blade there, your whipper. And we're just going to transfer this to another bowl. Oh. See, that's like, that's piping texture. See where it completely holds its shape. So 
if you want to pipe designs or shells or anything like that, that's the texture you would want to use. So now I'm going to split it up and I'm going to do the three colors, our red, green, and yellow. So I'm going to put a little bit into each of these containers. You don't need too much where I'm only doing a few cookies, so I don't need to use too much. And the leftover, I kind of want to smooth it out. All right, so for your leftover, what you want to do is to take so your saran wrap and place it right down over, flat onto the icing. This will prevent it from drying out. Make sure it's all well sat there. And then use a second one to cover the top. And you can keep that in the refrigerator for quite a long time, actually. So now I want to thin these down so that we can actually, well, we're, well, the technique that we're doing is wet on wet. Yeah. Thing out of the way. Okay, so I added a couple of tablespoons of water to my royal icing here and mixed it up. So you know it's a good flooding um, texture when you make a mark in it and it'll fill in in about five to eight seconds. That looks pretty good there. So I'm going to make... Um, so I'm first going to get all my icings to the right texture. So you just continue to add water slowly until you get the correct um, consistency that you would like. My white is good to go. So I'm going to fill up my piping bags here with my white so it doesn't dry out. So these are little ties for um to for your uh, oh these are little bands for your piping bag. It just goes over. You stick the little arrowhead through, and tied up keeps everything in its place. As well as you can get these little um, clips to tip the ends once you've cut them. So let's get our colors done. Yellow, green. Ooh, that was a lot of green. And just get them popped into piping bags. I like to put them over a glass, a tall glass. Just makes it easier to fill them. Now on to the fun part, decorating. So I'm just going to move the camera so that you can actually see the decorating and see it up, up nice and close. All right, so we're all set up here. So what you're going to need is your um, the colors that you want in piping bags, a um, couple scribes, or like I said, you can use um, a bamboo bamboo skewers, and also teeny tiny paint brushes. Um, again, brand new or ones that you dedicate specifically for baking. All right, let's make some designs. Ooh, take your cookie, put her on the little turntable. So I'm going to make the base white. So we're just going to make a circle around close to the edge. And then you just continue around your circle to fill it in. And don't worry about the little gaps because that is what the scribe is for. So we just fill in our gaps and then you can push it out a little to the side to make it even. And then you want to keep, always clean your tip off. So, so you want to keep a paper towel handy. And you're going to take each, I'm going to take each of my colors, my red, my yellow, and my green, and I'm going to alternate stripes. And you want to work pretty quickly. And this technique is called wet on wet. So 
And then you take your scribe and you just pull down like so. Clean off your tip and leave a little space and pull down. Again, leave a little space, pull down. Try and keep them straight. And then you're going to go the opposite way. Now we're going to pull up in between our lines there. And there we have, look at that simple, pretty design. See, you can do that for all the people who are saying that I can't decorate, can't decorate cookies. You can do that. So that's the first one. Wait by my pause. Now our second one. I'm gonna make it like kind of like a tie-dye. So again, I'm gonna make my base white. And this time you're just going to make some dots. In various spots. Make sure to leave enough room for all your colors. And then you just take your scribe and you just circle around. Drag all those colors into each other. Hey, look how simple that was. Like two seconds. Look how pretty that is. Now you could also do your background block. Take my scribe. Then we can do the stripe technique again. And then I'm going to take my scribe. I'm just going to turn my cookie around now so my lines are now horizontal. And this time we're going to go squiggly lines. Do one down and then one up. Now we go down and we go up. And look how cool that looks. Ooh, I really like that one. All right. Now here's a cool design. It's kind of making like fire. So for this, we're going to use black, red, and yellow. And I said you're going to want to work fairly quickly. So I'm going to do about a third of the cookie red. Now the yellow. You want to line it up right against the red. Yellow is just a little thick, but still okay. Smack her down. And the bottom, we're going to put black. Clean off that drip. This time I'm going to use the paintbrush. So I said, you want to use a small paintbrush, kind of like that. 
and we're going to take start in the block and we're going to squiggle up and draw that up and clean off your tip. Do it. Now we're going to bring the red down. We're going to bring the block up again, kind of in between. I'm going to drag that red down. I said you need to work quickly because the icing starts to dry and then it will start to break, kind of break up a bit. And it drags more of that red down. Dragging some of the yellow down into the block. I'm going to smack that out. I'm going to pull some of the yellow up into the red. I'm going to get a different cleaner brush. There you go. We got one that kind of looks like flames. I like that design. I think that one's really cool. So there are four designs. Now, if your cookie starts to drip off the edge like that, like I said, just you can just take a wipe. Won't have the cleanest edges, but probably helps if you try if you try to do it with clean hands. I'm just going to give those a few moments to dry before I. Um, I'm just going to give those a few minutes to dry, then I can come kind of back and say goodbye. So that wraps up our tutorial on how to make happy spiced sugar cookies and how to make these easy decorations on them for you so that you can make them for gifts for the holidays or for your friends and that for their, for their birthdays or for whatever occasion that you would like. So thank you so much for joining me. But don't forget to watch part two on how to use a mini projector to project any image that you would like onto your sugar cookies and the world is your oyster on creativity. All right. Thanks again for joining me and you guys have an awesome rest of your day.